We are privileged tonight to have a visiting speaker. Don't worry, it's not me. <laughs> um, but no, seriously, it's, uh, it's good to have Philip, Reverend Philip Gascoigne in our midst. Philip is known to many people, I'm sure to many people here, and particularly in the Northwest, where he's ministered for many years. So it was good to know that he could come and share with us this evening. But just before he does, he's asked me to uh, read just a few verses of Scripture, which he's going to preach on. And that's from John, St. John's Gospel, chapter 14, and the first six verses. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. But Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do not know him and have seen him. Sit there. That is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And thank you, Philip. Uh, good evening, everybody. It's a pleasure and a privilege to be with you and especially to be invited to speak. As some of you will know, I do gather with you uh, on a Sunday evening for worship, and I do appreciate the welcome that I receive on those uh, occasions. We've already had a wonderful testimony, and uh, I'm just wondering whether it's necessary to have a message as well, but there we are. I've been asked, so I better share with you uh, what is laid on my heart. And I want to speak about heaven. I want to speak about heaven. When a preacher was announcing that he was going to talk about heaven, uh, a lady who was rather hard of hearing on the front row said, I've been there. <laughs> so the preacher said, well, come and tell us about heaven. Oh, she said heaven. I thought you said Devon. <laughs> no, heaven. Is there a heaven? Well, the, uh, the atheist would say, no, there isn't. The agnostic would say, I don't know. And the Christian says, yes, there is. And the only reason why the Christian can speak with such assurance is because we believe what Jesus said. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He knows things that we don't know. And Jesus says, there is a heaven. And that's why we believe. A little girl was uh, crying upstairs in bed, couldn't get to sleep, asking her mother to come up and stay with her. Mother was busy. Still, she said, Would you come up, mummy? No, I can't. God is with you. To which the little girl replied, well, I want a God with a skin on. <laughs> and that's what we've got as Christians, Emmanuel. God with us, God with a skin on. There is a heaven. 
And Jesus, the Son of God, is the one who is, makes us sure that there is a heaven. And there's a lovely verse in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, which says, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the imagination of man, the things that God has prepared for those that love him. And you think of what you've seen, beautiful things, scenery, being away on holiday, beautiful country, or things that you hear here, the singing of the group, but eye has not seen and hear has not heard what God has prepared for those that love him. Oh, wow. Yes, we believe there is a heaven. There's another question we need to ask is, what do they do in heaven? What do they do in heaven? A man had a dream. And in his dream, an angel came in to his dream. They were talking. And he said to the angel, there's a question I'd like to ask. What is it? Do they play darts in heaven? I like darts. I'm a member of a team. Do they play darts in heaven? The angel said, well, I've never been asked that question before. I'll just slip away and I'll be back in a few seconds. And sure enough, the angel disappeared and returned. And the angel said, well, I've got good news and I've got bad news. The good news, they do play dance in heaven. The bad news, you're in the first team tomorrow night. <laughs> ah, yes, what do they do in heaven? One thing we can be sure of is that they praise God, they worship the Lord. And uh, there's a lovely verse in, uh, in the Revelation, chapter 7, and where John says, After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Yes, we have that, uh, that vision, that picture of uh, this great, enormous crowd that cannot be numbered from every nation, every tribe, worshipping God and the Lamb. The saying, it's because of the Lamb that we're here. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. What do they do? Yes, they worship. And also, we know from that prayer that Jesus gave us to pray that they do God's will in heaven. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. They do God's will in heaven. That's a big difference, isn't it, between heaven and earth. On earth we go our own way. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. In heaven they do God's will. As I was uh, preparing, uh, it sort of registered with me that we sometimes overlook the angels in heaven. We know some of the part that uh, angels played in our Lord's ministry. The angel Gabriel visits Mary concerning the birth of Jesus and tells her that she's going to bear God's son. The angel announces uh, the birth of Jesus to the shepherds and suddenly there's a great company of angels singing uh, in, to the shepherds and the shepherds go and find the Saviour. There's rejoicing in heaven amongst the angels over one sinner who repents. 
And do you remember when Jesus was arrested and Peter drew out his sword and he cut off the high priest's servant's ear? Jesus said, do you think I cannot call on my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? The angels were waiting, waiting for Jesus to say, come, but he didn't. He knew why he'd come into the world and knew that he had to face the cross. But he said, I want to call the angels, I could do so. And when Christ returns, Matthew 24, 31, when Christ returns, he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call and they will gather his elect from the four winds from, over, from one end of the earth to the other. The place of angels, we sometimes fail to recognize the activity and the presence of angels. Yes, what, who, what do they do in heaven? They do God's will, and that is what the angels do. And the final question, of course, is, which we've been reminded of already, what is the way to heaven? What is the way to heaven? Um, forgive me telling these jokes. I did pray about it. Sometime, when I retired, a combination of fun and faith, the Lord gave me a verse, 1 Corinthians 9, 22, by all means, winsome. It may be that some folks are prepared to realizing that as Christians, we're not dead serious. We can share a joke, we can laugh, but we can be also serious when necessary. But what is the way to heaven? Well, the one who tells us that there is a heaven and who tells us that God's will is done in heaven is also the one who tells us the way to heaven. We've already been reminded in our singing that Jesus is the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Jesus is the way to the Father's house. I remember on one occasion I was lost in London. I stopped and somebody gave me some directions and I tried to follow the directions. I got lost again. Stopped and asked somebody, could you tell me the way to so-and-so? They gave me the directions and off I went and I got lost again. Third time I asked, the person said, well, I'm going that way. I'll come, in with, you. come, with, you. come with you in the car. I said, please do. He would no need to give me instructions. He was the way. He was the way. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Have you ever thought of who was the first person to enter heaven? I'm sure you know. The first person to enter into heaven. That thief on the cross lived a criminal's life Nothing to offer to Jesus in any sense. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Isn't that amazing? Doesn't it make it clear that eternal life, a place in heaven, is a free gift it isn't something that we've got to work for. Today, you will be with me in paradise. And the other remarkable conversion is that of the Apostle Paul, isn't it? Who, an enemy of, the, of Jesus, an enemy of the church, uh, had Christians killed. And in his uh, anger and annoyance on that Damascus road, on his way to Damascus to arrest Christians and bring them back and put them in prison. 
And yet he, he made that discovery on the Damascus Road. Jesus is alive. Jesus loved him. Jesus would lead him. And he wrote in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And then he adds, of whom I am chief. He's already sa saved the chief of sinners. He'll save all who come unto him. Well now, you've listened carefully. I'll just close with the words of a hymn. He died that we might be forgiven. He died to make us good, that we might go at last to heaven, saved by his precious blood, by that sacrifice on the cross, where he bore our sins in his body on the tree. And we come and we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for loving me. And, to, and I trust you as my Lord, my Savior. Maybe there's somebody tonight and you're going to take that step. They, uh, if so, there are some uh, St. John's Gospels, special ones down here. And uh, if anybody wants to take one to pass on to a friend uh, or a member, member, a member of the family, uh, the, the, the way of salvation is illustrated very well as well as being John's Gospel. And the other thing is that as Christians, we need to have our daily Bible reading. And there are some, our daily breads here. And if you want one, just take one. So just come forward, help yourself. And thank you. And God bless you. And if anybody wants to speak to me afterwards, I'd be delighted to help. Thank you.